Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the weekly covert meeting. Um, I'm your host, Chris Caligari. It is Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. And um, looks like we have a few folks that I don't recognize on the participant list. Uh, if you want to take a minute and introduce yourself, you're more than welcome to. Uh, may I start? Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Michael. This is, uh, this is the first time I attend this meeting. I am working for, uh, for ARM. Uh, we have been investigating the uh, Cooperverse for several months, and we focused on hypervisor. And uh, recently, we created a topic in the community issues and uh, mailing, mailing list about uh, the Zen hypervisor board. And hopefully uh, today we can uh, have a chance to talk about uh, this idea. And today I sent a short PowerPoint uh, for introduction in the middle list. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. That's gonna be a hot topic. Can't wait to hear what everybody's thoughts are. Uh, anyone else? Hi everyone, my name is Greatness. I am currently an outreach intern. Uh, this is my first time attending a meeting as well. Actually, it's my second time. The first time I was actually late. I think I met you, Chris. Hi, Greatness. Good to talk to you again. Thank you for joining us. Okay, uh, hi guys, I'm Federico. I joined the uh, Red Hat and, uh, in, the, in the previous week. It's my uh, second time uh, I uh, joined uh, this team and uh, this uh, meeting, sorry. And uh, yes, I'm currently working on uh, Cubeweart and uh, every, hello everybody. Welcome to the meeting. Nice to meet you. And anyone else would like to say hi? Okay. Um, going once. Oh, Sujit from India. I'm here as a newbie to Cloud Native. I'm just starting getting involved in the community and attending different meetings from the CNCF events agenda. Okay, welcome. I hope you uh, enjoy your product. Um, let me know if uh, you need anything to uh, get started. Um, we definitely need a lot of help from all across the board. Um, and just in case uh, you don't know, uh, the meeting notes are post, I just posted the chat. So if you could fill out your attendance, uh, we do track attendance week to week. And um, we uh, feel free to add anything you would like to talk about to the agenda or open floor. And Michael, if you there's nothing on the agenda, so if you want to get started with uh, talking about uh, level one hypervisors, you're more than welcome. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, can you uh, open the PowerPoint, or if I can share my screen for that? Uh, you should be able to share your screen. Okay, so please wait for a while. Um, I'm trying it. Looks good. Okay, can I see you to right? Okay, so 
me start. Uh, the, the, as, as I mentioned, uh, now, uh, we are working uh, for um, and uh, we're interested in the enterprise topics. And uh, the, the proposal here is to extend another kind of hypervisor in Kubevert. It's a type one hypervisor. So the first uh, ask maybe what is type one hypervisor and the type two? What's the difference? Uh, to be simple, type one hypervisor runs directly on the host hardwire. And uh, the chart the, on the left is the type one hypervisor. And the uh, type two hypervisor runs on an operating system. So the difference is that here on the hardware we have operating system. Uh, then the well-known Zen hypervisor is, is type one and uh, KVM is type two. So currently Cooper supports KVM and the, the, uh, our proposal is to support the other, the other type. So let me, let me find. Uh, now, nowadays, Zen is not uh, as popular as KVM. We, we know that, but uh, in some special fields like um, edge system or uh, automotive automotive area, uh, Zen hypervisor is still predominant uh, in virtualization solution. So that's why there could be. Um, use cases um, that, that is wanted for a type one hypervisor. And uh, I'm invested a lot in uh, type one hypervisor, I mean Zen, and uh, there is broad use cases in the ICO system. So with to support Zen hypervisor, what will be changed to Google? Uh, this 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 is a very high level description about the deployment uh, uh, of everything for uh, Kubevert. The exchange it would be like that. On the left side of the chart, it is the current uh, uh, deployment uh, instances. And um, uh, a VM is contained in the pod where the vert what launcher is running. But uh, for a type one hypervisor, I mean, then uh, it will be different because of the difference in the architecture. The VM, I mean, DOM U, we call it DOM U in, in Zen. The VM will be running on top of the Zen hypervisor rather than in the host. So the VM would be jump out of the host and it will be separate from the host. It is not in this port. This is the most uh, significant uh, difference for them. And uh, we... Uh, hi yes. everyone here. Uh, first, thanks Michael for preparing this, this preparation. What I wonder, what are the implications here regarding to C groups and namespaces, for instance, with that? Could you, can you elaborate on that too? Uh, yes, to uh, isolate uh, something for the VM, I mean, the namespace and the C group, uh, it is done in, in this part in the, it is handled in the pod with Liberate. And uh, here we must, uh, share some host uh, resources to this pod. So, so, that, so back on, yeah, sorry. The liberals can talk to the hypervisor and uh, manage uh, DOMU uh, VM. So would this mean that C group requests would still be represented correct inside a pod? Or yeah. Oh, interesting. So in that case, the C group and the namespace only works uh, for the Zen drivers part. Ah, okay. So so Kubernetes would basically not know 
in its usual way how much resources are consumed, or would it know that? Uh, Kubernetes, do you mean Kubernetes? So uh, normal, I, normally, I the kubelet can... and Kubernetes sees on the pod how many CPU and memories are reserved and used. Would this still be the case? Okay, uh, so in that no, no, no. Um, typically, the kubelet should be running on this DOM zero VM. It, it is the so called the host. It only so Kubernetes like, can only see the resource on DOM zero, not the one for VM. Okay, so it's a separate environment entirely. It's separated by a hypervisor. Like the host, uh, what I'm getting is the actual host the Kubelet is running on and the pods are running on. That's running yeah. within a virtual machine. And yes. that's capable of launching a another virtual machine completely separate from that environment. Yes, the VM is separate from the so-called host, and the, what, what, what's common for them is only the Zen hypervisor. So I see. Okay. Okay. So. I think Roman uh, and I are going to have a lot of thoughts, but I don't want to derail your your presentation. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to hear. Same here. I, <laughs> right. I hear so far what I needed. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Please go on. Uh, so to achieve the support, the, the, the supporting, uh, there are some challenges in uh, we have met it in the prototype work, and uh, specifically there there should be some changes in distinguishing different hypervisor type in build time and resolving different uh, software dependency for hypervisors and uh, uh, handling the host system uh, resource isolation and uh, then, then virtual matching is also something we need to handle because the host, um, the bare metal uh, Zen version could be different from that in the libovert and uh, also VM status monitoring and uh, VM networking. So we made a proof of concept uh, to try the possibility. And uh, with, with that uh, prototype, now we can schedule a Zen VM on Kubernetes cluster and manage the VM lifecycle. And we can also log in a uh, Zen VM by what control client and uh, that's was tested on both x86 and uh, m64. And uh, after all, a proof of concept uh, is not uh, complete. Uh, there are still some areas we haven't uh, been able to cover, including uh, the VM network setting. Uh, uh, that's the main situation of our investigation and the preparing preparation so far. We have a more detailed uh, technos, or you can say that uh, design doc you are made uh, internally, but I think now it's too early to talk about um, these details. Yeah, so, so I had another question here regarding to your use case. You mentioned that in automated, yeah. this is still uh, pretty common to use Zen. So uh, are you looking for specific features which Zen provides you, which KVM doesn't have like re regarding to real term time or something or, so are there some things which you need for your work from Zen? Okay. So for example, on a vehicle, vehicle system and the, the robustness and the stability could be the top priority. And as you know, that as a top two uh, hypervisor KVM, for KVM, uh, the vCPUs of a VM are in, uh, in fact like uh, contained or carried by, uh, by the shrines of a uh, virtual machine monitor application. And uh, that is in application level. And uh, there is 
risk that um, that our application crashes or something like that. But uh, then it's different as we we saw in the architecture. The um, here uh, VM is running on directly on the then then hypervisor. So even there's something wrong in in the host uh, in there, it doesn't impact uh, the VM itself. So it could be more robust uh, and uh, stable. That's one of the aspects to apply then in these areas. Okay, thanks. So on the chat, I saw somebody ask, um, Lisha, I think, uh, yeah, how are you passing storage? And my question would be also, how, how are you tying this into the network as well, at the pod network, this Zen uh, virtual machine? Yeah, the, I think the, in, the, in our prototype, uh, we verified uh, many aspects of, of, the, uh, the, of the Zen support. Uh, and I think among, among the network is the most um, Hard uh, part because the in in, in this like this uh, deployment uh, the um, VM is running out of the pod network, so I can share a little bit our uh, detailed uh, analysis. A part is about uh, the. Uh, network. So far, our best thinking, our best um, practice in considering is that uh, we we want to test uh, using host network in the in the pod in the pod because we uh, the software in the pod can see the same network with uh, the DOM U, I mean the VM. Um, and besides this, I didn't figure out other uh, ways to connect. But uh, to our but my investigation on network is uh, is just the beginning. So I haven't uh, make a complete uh, solution. And besides network, I also tested. Uh, uh, storage and uh, other things uh, looks like uh, we can support um, uh, many recurrent uh, features. I think so one of the biggest challenges. Question. Well, go ahead. Uh, whoever was talking. Is there a capable precise running in virtual venture or are you using uh, I about this question I'm I'm sure that uh, on arm there will not be we didn't use a QMU on arm but uh, for x86 uh, I'm not sure but I can answer that uh, arm we don't have a QMU. So we also uh, noticed uh, this part. Um, so in in Kubervert, uh, as I know that uh, we are watching a QMU process to monitor if a, a guest a, a, is live or not. So with, I forgot where, where is it? Uh, so for them, we need to, we need to use other another way to to find uh, the status of uh, the VM. So quite probably by uh, some some ports with the hypervisor to check the status of a VM. One of the I would say <clears throat> core tenets of the Qvert design is that the pod is the virtual machine and the virtual machine is the pod. Meaning that if the pod goes down, 
that we are mm -hmm. ensured that the virtual machine has terminated. And when I, when I look at this diagram, it seems like it's possible for the virtual machine to technically outlive the pod. Um, is that is that possible? Uh, I'm not, maybe it's not possible. Like what's the separation here? Is it possible for the uh, Zen drivers, whatever is in, like, maybe there's a QMU process in there that's talking to the, to the Zen virtual machine. I don't know. Is it possible for that to go down and for the virtual machine to continue to live? Uh, okay. uh, I see your, um, I, I see your uh, concern. Let me see. It, it looks, uh, indeed it looks possible. Mm -hmm. So from a design yeah. point of view, the, the reason that makes us, uh, or at least I'll speak for myself, uneasy mm -hmm. is that we don't have full visibility into what's actually occurring. So we don't know if we've for sure terminated a virtual machine. The cluster thinks that it's terminated because the pod is gone, but uh -huh. the reality may or may not match what uh -huh. the cluster thinks. Yes, I think uh, to mitigate uh, this for then we may need a um, little bit more design to somehow to talk with, talk to Zen um, to, to check the status of the VM if the pod has, has been, has been uh, queued for some, some reason. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I would just think through that uh, and see if that's feasible. Um, uh, yes, uh, well, we didn't have to consider it in this case. But yes, but we should consider that. This is one thing. And another question, which makes me personally a little bit uneasy is also that even if we get the connection to say when the pod goes down, the VM goes down, I wonder how complete the integration with Kubernetes will be at the end. Like right now, really, as David said, the whole VM is in the pod. There is nothing outside of it. And, um, Mm -hmm. This means that all monitoring and reporting structures from, Cuba, from the Kubelet work as expected. And for the scheduler, we request resources from the scheduler for our pod and they're really consumed one-to-one -one, and it matches really what the VM is uses, using on every aspect. Did you also think about further changes which may be, need, be needed for, for the cluster, like probably custom scheduling and so on? Oh, in our uh, current prototype, we haven't uh, touched uh, uh, the, this problem, really. Yeah, I, I just want to highlight it because if you want to investigate this further, you probably should think about this too. Because, uh, yes. yeah, that, that what David said and what I said are, are two of the core drivers for the current design from Qbert, how it is today. Mm -hmm. Yes, we our previous... Uh, type work uh, focused on the feasibility to manage a VM, um, mainly managing the life cycle of a VM. So yes, we, we haven't uh, done deeply ab about um, this resource management uh, thing. Uh, with that. Thank you. Okay. So is there... Uh, to, uh, there, there, there are a few general notes which I also wanted to make. Did you by any chance also see the real-time work which we were doing lately on Kubert to enabling the KVM real-time features that may also be interesting for you, just as a side note. And there was something uh, sorry, else well, wanted. Uh, was that a question to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just late, uh, just by coincidence, uh, Lately, some work on real-time KVM started, which may be interesting oh. for Automative too. It's just something I wanted to highlight. Maybe that's interesting for you. Uh huh. Um, okay, I'll check that. Um, uh, but um, as uh, as our as Arm is a heavy interest in in Zen, so some of our so uh, software stacks are have been 
uh, fixed uh, to Zen. So how Zen is a a requirement uh, for our work. So of course we will also be interested in QBM and the real time. Yeah, yeah. One of your colleagues from ARM uh, in, made quite some good progress uh, for ARM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Howard, yeah, yeah. And I'm curious. We are in the same group. Uh, I'm I'm curious if Qvert is going to be used. Is this, is this more of a QE effort? So testing of some sort of automotive virtual machine, or is it actually going to be something that's production? So, so some of the things that we pointed out might not matter if this is just trying to start a bunch of Zen virtual machines because there's some sort of validation that needs to occur and the production environment is totally different. Uh, I think uh, if we support um, two different hypervisors, we at least we need to use different um, maybe server for each type because on a a uh, host um, that was configured with KVM, I think, uh, I think we, we can't create a um, virtual machine that, uh, in, that was Zen enabled. And we can't uh, enable, uh, we, can, we can't switch between KVM and the Zen uh, without a reboot. I think I was asking more of uh, what do you have any more information you can share about your use case for Zen and whether this is testing or is, are these production like workloads or is this some sort of uh, workload that just needs to go through his validation process that then gets handed off to run okay. in some sort of automotive environment completely independent of Kubernetes entirely? Okay, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we are the open source team of ARM, um, and uh, we didn't uh, create a uh, concrete uh, product, product, so the, um, the concrete uh, use case is, is not um, uh, in our side, uh, but um, we, we only work on the upstream to and provide uh, possibilities for uh, other real use cases. So, so would it be fair to, to say that uh, do you expect that you run at the end Kubernetes that you want to run at the end in cars Kubernetes clusters yes. with containers and send VMs? Is that your goal, or is it more for verification? Uh, yes, that's right. Which of the two? Probably it will be in uh, uh, vehicle use case at first. Okay, so, so so you're thinking about edge, Kubernetes edge, basically. Okay. Uh, there, there's, so, there's Roman, Roman David, yeah? um, this is Chris. Um, I Hi. also know of uh, Zen workloads. Um, uh, I hate to say uh, this type of workload in finance uh, called high frequency trading systems, which uh, nobody likes, uh, but those are, are Zen based um, real time workloads. And there's also um, uh, real time workloads on Zen and HPC for data collection from um, the um, um, the uh, huh? super yeah. colliding superconductors. <laughs> I was trying to think of the modern word. <laughs> That's like a 20 year old name so, for the thing. So, <laughs> there, there's one more thing I've been wondering. Uh, um, and this is like there are lately quite some projects are coming up which are less about running. Kubernetes as Kubernetes somewhere. I'm just posting a link here, for instance, to KCP because uh, just some thoughts which are coming up based on stuff I've read lately. So um, it's getting more and more interesting to, to, to instead of going directly and trying to modify Kubernetes and its add-ons 
to meet certain, let me call it more extreme needs. Instead of that, it's just more like of going back to just using the Kubernetes API principles and creating your own implementations behind. Maybe this is also some use case for, for this. So basically you can have basically the whole freedom of defining architectural needs yourself, but can still keep the API, which is very often a big win. So it's just another thought. I think this really um, shows the, the power of the design proposal uh, documentation that we have, um, getting our, our workload use case documented. Uh, yeah. We can all think of, of different uh, workloads that would, that would uh, work well in this architecture. Um, and unless you uh, review our, our YouTube uh, channel and our old, uh, our old uh, videos, that, that information would just get lost in time. But I think it's still yeah. worthwhile to yeah. create a design proposal for this. Yeah. And thank you for adding the uh, use case information. Thank you. So, yeah, I have no more questions. Thank you, Michael, for. Uh, so, so, so how, how do you think um, about um, this direction or the proposal? So, so uh, uh, for, for me, per, so again, Roman, for me, um, it would be important to better understand how something like this would fit into Kubernetes as it is right now. Like, as we, we mentioned, the points where the, where the, mm -hmm where the DOM is actually not really in Kubernetes, which has influence, potential influence on scheduling C groups if the VM goes down. I think that are really the points for us in Kubert to understand, to see if this would be feasible at all. I think. Yeah. Okay, I will add up uh, more about this and uh, maybe later I can share um, a more detailed uh, uh, design, including the uh, topics we discussed today. Mm -hmm. I think that would be great, yeah. Okay. David, do you think? Yeah, more information would be good. Um, I'm generally just, I'm apprehensive of huh. how this could be Take it, taken in exactly the way this document uh, or this diagram is. I think that most likely if we find a path forward, it's gonna be a way of extending Qvert uh, and similar to what Roman pointed out with KCP, uh, like some sort of way of taking part of the Qvert API and control plane and then allowing like, for example, the node portion to be pluggable or something for, for people to wanna use something like Zen, um, it's difficult for me to see clearly right now. Yeah. It's definitely a challenge. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say my, my thoughts looking at all this is that um, it's gonna be difficult. Uh, it's not a perfect fit, but yeah, we'd like to especially, find more information. Especially if we think about mixing and containers and VMs again, yeah. Um, may I ask a question? Absolutely, go ahead. Yeah, so I have the impression that you are not really interested in using Kubernetes to schedule VMs, but mostly the management tool, in this case, Libvirt. Is my impression right? Or... Uh, I think the, one of the origination for Kubernetes to Combined workload of uh, normal pod, pod workload and uh, okay. yeah, without um, uh, how do you share, for example, I, I'm taking storage, but network is the same uh, with Xan VM and uh, a Linux instance because 
outside Kubernetes. How does this work usually with, uh, um, with Xen and other Linux instances? Uh, so, sorry, I didn't uh, get your question. Can you repeat again? Yeah, uh, so I'm just uh, asking how it works with Xen, for example, for sharing storage uh, between a mm -hmm. Linux and Xen VM, for example. Yeah. Yes, and in storage, we... Oh, I, let me recall what we have verified. Because I think this is could be helpful to understand how you can share workload between standard containers and uh, Xen VM. Uh, yes, generally the, uh, the 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 volume can can be shared, but uh, as I can remember that uh, there is there is there is still some gaps. Not all types uh, can be shared. That the I forgot where is the list that we have confirmed. Uh, where is it? Oh, right. Maybe it's here. Oh, uh, no. Uh, Michael, I can uh, comment on the storage. Uh, I have a colleague at NASA who does uh, data collection on uh, weather sensors across the planet. His, uh, his method of um, dropping storage to virtual machines is uh, probably very different than what we are all used to. Uh, for one thing, they run a 100 gig ethernet system. And uh, so they have <laughs> virtually unlimited ba uh, network bandwidth and uh, they want to use it. Um, and then um, the, the protocol they use is NFS 4.1. And uh, the target is uh, also an IBM parallel file system. So these are mechanisms that are not seen in your everyday um, IT shop, um, even, even in some like large banks or large corporate installations. Uh, his, his system is very expensive. <laughs> our tax dollars at work, basically. <laughs> oh. So they don't care about uh, doing uh, PVCs and um, PVs within the Kubernetes system. They, they keep that as a separate layer. Uh -huh. It's gonna be a separate layer. Yeah, I just I was just wondering how um, Xen can share a workload or information with uh, normal containers. That was the origin of my question. That's definitely an interesting aspect where more information would be needed. I agree. So I think uh, as I as I see Michael scrolling through his Confluence page, it sure looks like he has uh, most, if not all, of the data points we need for creating a design proposal. Uh, you're scrolling through there pretty fast, so I'm just like getting snippets of of the data. <laughs> I can end the question. I can end the question to the to the Google Docs. So. Uh -huh. I need to mute somebody. Hold on. Uh, I didn't understand it well, but I can uh, handle it and answer it uh, later after the meeting. Are they coaching? Yeah, Chris, it seems yeah, Suchit I'm, seems to be the one you would. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, my, my Zoom went full screen and I lost control of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Michael, I, I think before, before you spent the time on creating a bigger proposal, I would be good if you, I think we came up with a few interesting questions also for you. Okay. I think it's good if you would think, if you would think one step farther and think about how these questions could be addressed and if you see if path forward sure come back is with that on, to us so, yeah. okay is, is it on the uh, meeting minutes uh, document the questions um, i or... can provide a link i wrote mine in the gdocs in the status yeah. meetings i'll add a few others. more I will adjust that uh, uh, offline. Yeah. Roman, I have a question in this regard. Uh, do I understand correctly that what is missing here is that this solution is not reflecting the load of the of the the, the node itself? So and then the the schedule of, of Kubernetes is not will not know if, if you can schedule VMs on this uh, node or not. This is the main problem. Yeah, for instance, so uh, the, the the scheduler and kubelet know how much resources are used and reserved. So, but it, this this would not be reflected anymore because either you would request with the request on the VM or the pod request from the DOM zero where Kubelet is running in the RAM and from the DOM U, which makes it double, or you're not re reflecting the reality at all from your request. So, so, so the solution needs to come in a, in a way that it's possible to reflect the, from the Zen hypervisor, you need to reflect the resources used. So the scheduler, whatever it will be, will be able to make a correct decision. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's- Yeah, that's, that's what's to investigate, for instance, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, thanks. Also with allocating resources. Um, so same way with when we allocate uh, dedicated CPUs, for example. Um, so I wonder how this DOM U will get uh, that specific dedicated CPUs that it got from uh, the CPU manager. I mean, there it has to play it nice with the uh, with Kubernetes. Uh, for Zen, we made uh, the Zen support some pin uh, pin functions to pin some values to Bitcoin. and uh, but uh, I'm I'm not sure if we if I uh, critical CPU can be technically assigned uh, to a VM, but I suppose there should be supported. I, I, I should uh, from that. I think uh, Armand, regarding the CPU, there should be a big gap uh, in them. I'm, I'm sorry, Michael, I, I couldn't hear you. It was really breaking up for me. Uh, uh, sorry, what's the question? The question is about the, the, the CPU, uh, vCPU writer, can it uh, be dedicatedly uh, assigned um, uh, the, to, to, to physical CPUs? Is that your quest, the, the question? Oh, I was um, sorry. I, I was just saying that um, um, normally when we uh, start a VM, um, mm -hmm. we we integrate this with the with the pod, and the pod has different um, QS levels. So when the QS level is, uh -huh. for example, the guaranteed, then the then the resources that we allocate for that um, mm -hmm. pod uh, are guaranteed as well. And the one who allocates these resources is the CPU manager on the node. And then it would assign specific CPUs uh, for that pod to use. And, that, and these uh, CPUs, these specific CPUs are the ones that uh, are going to be 
um, used uh, for the VM um, uh -huh. yeah. in, in pinning mode. So, I, I mean, um, when we're taking this model as, a, as an example, I wonder how uh, the DOM U will know which CPUs to use in the node. Okay, that's uh, that is the Zen hypervisor determined. Uh, Zen hypervisor determine uh, which domain use uh, which CPU, and it also demand if 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 all the CPUs are shared uh, among all the domains or just um, assign someone uh, specifically to some uh, VMs. That in information and that so, management. Yeah. So in this, the, is the, this is the key, um, I guess, uh, um, in all of this, uh, because um, the CPU manager will lose control here. Um, CPU manager is the one that allocates resources uh, in the cluster uh, on the node. Oh, yeah. I think that's um, the same question yeah. as uh, Ro uh, Roman had mentioned that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, it, yeah, that's the um, same kind of the uh, resource that the, that the, the host uh, the dom zero that may may, may maybe not uh, see uh, yes we will uh, continue to investigate about that uh, resource ma uh, management uh, issue or topic uh, let me get right to capture your question also in the agenda So I'm yeah, Michael, sure I think we, uh, Michael, I think we captured most the most relevant immediate questions for us in the spreadsheet. I hope that uh, in the Google, in the Google Doc. I hope I hope that helps in the meeting minutes of the meeting. Yes, definitely. Um, so I'm showing 50 minutes after the hour. Um, Michael, if you don't mind, I'm going to close this topic. Um, we have a few more sm small uh, items to talk about before the close of the meeting. Yeah, um, thank you, thank you, this, everybody, for listening about this. It, thank you. This has been an excellent discussion, and um, the proof of concept looks looks uh, really exciting. Uh, thank you, and uh, look forward to seeing more of this uh, of this topic. Um, so definitely keep an eye on uh, on the notes. I'll get uh, the notes sent out, and uh, as well as the chat log. So okay. just, to, um, just to make sure we catch everything. Uh, yes, I have seen all the questions in the meeting minutes document. I will adjust uh, every one of them. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, indeed, thank you. Okay, a um, couple bullet points. Roman, if you don't mind, I'm gonna talk about yours also. Um, we just had a, a couple events. We had a KubeCon NA um, last week. Um, David Vassal and I um, ran through our, our presentation and uh, we had, um, I lost track because uh, we were both talking and demonstrating. Um, last time I looked, there was 45 attendees and um, we ended up with about six questions and so it was uh, a very active presentation. Um, Stu and I did all things open yesterday. Um, coincidentally, we uh, presented Kubert running uh, ARM64 virtual machines. And uh, although uh, we weren't able to uh, present like a Bitcoin miner running on ARM64 or a Minecraft server, uh, we did run virtual machines and uh, we had about uh, 30 people attending and we also had about five questions. Um, KubeCon NA was not recorded. Um, all Things Open was recorded. And uh, we'll, as soon as we get that recording, we'll get that posted up to YouTube. Uh, Roman says that there's uh, several patch level releases. Um, going back to version 40, uh, we fixed a, a bridge bug that affected Windows virtual machines. 
um, failing migrations, going back to uh, 0.40. Um, that was for libvert, if custom libvert QEMU is used. Yes, that one is mostly interesting for, for, for other vendors which are using Qbert and using their own libvert QEMU versions. If they were using new libvert QEMU than we do, they most likely see failing migrations with, and it's addressed now. Oof. Yeah, we, uh, we, I'm so glad that didn't fail during demo last week because <laughs> we, we demoed live migration. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Zane says uh, there's a CADIS dependency update schedule. Yeah, we do not really have one, if I can, if I go ahead and answer that. So we update it on a need to basis. So if there is a need to update it, we just update it. Yeah, it's just that um, right now we are using like um, 1.20, right, which was like 10 months ago was updated. And um, in our application, we need to import word. Uh, um, and then this version is too um, lower. So um, which make this uh, important have some conflicts. So my yeah. question is, if it's updated on a needed basis, if there's no fixed guidance, do you mind if we update the dependency and then um, send a CL for it? I think two points here. First, yes, please just go ahead and update it if you if you need it. That's definitely fine. And second, uh, I think we will soon have an improvement in place uh, where we will release, in addition to client to Kubert client Go, we will release a, a pure Kubert slash API Golem package which just contains the API and where you can then run client gen. To generate your own client, like for most other Kubernetes dependencies, that should help making your product project mostly independent of the Kubernetes version which we're using in Kubernetes. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I, I saw that effort, but um, yeah, I'm very happy to say it, and uh, while we um, for it, but meanwhile, um, we will try to see if we can update the dependency. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And um, then the next one is also I raised this is about the Mac we have seen I plugin. I'm wondering like this, what's the status of that um, repo, um, and if anyone is maintaining it because that one has even older um, um, dependency like 1.19. And also we we hit some issues when using this Mac we have seen I plugin. So we are wondering if we can um, upstream all the fixes uh, or improvements, enhancement we have on this branch. Mm, well, let me answer that. Like I maintain that uh, that project. Like yeah, of course you can just like open issues, um, push PRs to that, and let's we'll take a look at that. Like the thing is, if I remember correctly, the version we build runs I don't know Golang one dot thirteen. Like it. You're right, it uses like very old versions of pretty much everything. And but uh, if there's like uh, an active user base looking for it, we can just well work together and uh, update pretty much whatever it is that you're looking for in it. Okay, so basically, you're saying that it's it's already out. It is updated, and if we would like, we can send a CL request to that, and uh, someone maybe from your team will review it. Yes. Like okay. I, I cannot promise like uh, very uh, timely reviews on it, but I can promise that they will happen. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Also, I want to mention that uh, most of us are on Slack too in Kubernetes. Such questions anytime in Kubert Dev in the Kubernetes Slack room to get such answers also outside of this community meeting, just to get them faster if needed. Okay, gotcha. Oh, wait, I could send the but this series is also perfect. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, we send an email to ask in group dive, um, but definitely uh, we will also press like uh, for, for, for questions. Uh, Thank you. Email is also fine. Yeah, always are great. Just want to point it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roman. 
So we have a, a lot of new users this week, um, likely from our, our presence at conferences. Um, I will make sure to send out a, uh, a communication reminder, um, reminding everybody of our community page on the website, um, the mailing list and our Slack channels. Okay, uh, that takes us to the 58th minute of the hour. Um, we are out of time, so um, I will uh, I will let us skip the mailing list review and bug scrub, which Roman always likes skipping bug scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I used up most of the time. <laughs> Oh, Michael, it is, it is okay. Uh, we, week to week, we, uh, we opt to skip bug scrub or we do a deep bug scrub. It, it varies. Uh, your topic was very exciting. We're really glad to have you here. Um, so um, I am going to close out this meeting now um, and return one minute to you. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us this week. It was a really great meeting, it's very lively. And uh, we'll see you next week. So, see you. Thank you. Thank you, thank Chris. You. Bye bye. Goodbye. Thank, thank you, Michael.